Hello and welcome to Meet the Boss TV. In this programme, how a new approach to protein drug development could help revolutionise the industry. Developing any new drug is a challenge, particularly when it comes to working with proteins, antibodies, viruses and other complex biologics. Identifying the right targets, excluding misleading candidates and eliminating side effects are all essential concerns that have proved challenging using existing techniques. I caught up with Paul Helbling, Head of Business Development at Dual Systems Biotech, to find out how his firm's approach is addressing some of those concerns. When you want to develop a protein drug, the most important thing is that you know how your protein drug works. So a protein drug will connect to a cell and the interaction of a cell with its environment is the cell membrane. In the cell membrane you have many receptors, proteins, and your ligand, so your protein ligand, will bind to those receptors and by this mediate the signal into the cell or either it does also tag the cells for neighboring cells to react. You want to exactly know this microenvironment in um, a system that is very close to the organism where you later give the drug to. Okay, sure. So at the moment, is the approach uh, somewhat trial and error? At the moment, the, what you have is this initial screening is done normally not in living organisms. And this is the um, exceptional part of our technique. What we can do is we can look at the living cell in a physiological condition and see how the ligand um, interacts with the cell membrane and with the proteins in the cell membrane. And that is the exciting part of our technique. So you want to know as close as possible in the beginning of developing a drug what will happen with the drug once it's given to an organism. So our in vitro system is um, very close to the in vivo situation. That's an important part. It's also usable for peptide drugs and it is also um, usable for viruses. Uh, how does approach, this, uh, this approach differ to the one used at the moment in the industry? So now in the industry you have quite often in the screening process uh, in vitro situation on dead cells, on fixed cells. So this microenvironment in the cell membrane changes when the cell is dead compared to a cell that is still alive and where um, the interactions are still in the same way um, done like later on in the, in the organism. So that's very important that we can observe that um, microenvironment and then from this we know the mode of action of, your, of our drug. One other part of our technique is a ligand, like a protein or a peptide, or much more to and um, for a virus, does not only bind one receptor, so it's not, in most cases, it's not just a one-to-one -one reaction, so it's not a monogamous um, ligand that you're looking at. In most cases, ligands are promiscuous, that means they can contact, react, with different receptors, and by this um, leads to different reactions within the cells. So this can be the cause of side effects of medication. In the start of um, developing a drug, you want to know all of those possibilities, and sometimes you like that it is promiscuous, but sometimes it's not very advantageous. So you can make uh, informed decision in which direction you would like to go. So this is about ensuring greater um, accuracy in the drug development process? Correct. So what kind of applications do you see for this development? What's the utility? You know, there are many applications and we are just now at the beginning where we have some exciting news where we can use that application. One of the first things during the R&D phase when a company needs to decide which candidate they want to bring forward, they need to um, find exactly the mode of action. So in that part of the um, drug development, you need to gather as much information as possible. Further, as I said, you want to know about your ligand. Where does it bind? Does it bind also other receptors? Um, and 
could those receptors have um, a bad influence later on in the organism. Then, as a third, we can not only work with protein ligands, but also with peptides and also with viruses. And viruses do have many proteins on their surface, and they can dock on many receptors, in most cases, on the cell. By knowing the strategy of the virus, how it enters the cell and infects it, you can start and develop new strategies to fight those, fight those infections. In the beginning now, where we start, what we have shown that it's working, but there are many more applications. When you want to know exactly how the interaction of proteins and um, cells are working. Um, and so why should firms partner with you? Is this about reducing cost? Is it about acquiring additional expertise, uh, improving time to market, something else entirely? I would say it's a bit all of it, because our technique is rather fast. Once you have the cells, you can um, perform the technique, analyze it with the LTM SMS. This takes um, a few days, roughly a week. And then you have the result where your ligand is binding to. Um, this gives you then the basic for an informed decision in which direction you want to go. And it's a lot of money on time and energy that you save when you do develop the right drug in the beginning and do not go down the wrong path. In the case of a virus, there you can develop new strategy. Maybe currently most companies use the same kind of receptors or the same kind of pathways where they try, try to find new medications. With our technique, you might find a new receptor nobody else has found for your virus of choice. And um, by this, have the big advantage compared to other companies to develop something that is unique to the market and has more effects than the drugs that are currently developed or are already on the market. So this is about uh, new drug development as well as enabling firms to, to fail faster? Yes, because it is very fast, the system. As I said, you just have your cell line and then you um, take the ligand at the triceps reagent, and then you can look at the interaction of the ligand and the receptor. And our triceps reagent does not interfere with the ligand receptor binding as it is binding to the glycosylation site of, of um, the receptor, but not to its protein backbone. And so where have you seen results to date? Where has the approach been successful? The technique has newly been developed by Professor Wolscheid's group at the ETH in Zurich and um, many um, other groups academia are interested in. And we could show now with this technique, um, especially Professor Wolscheid could show, that we can look at antibodies. We looked at leptin, um, but not only antibody drugs, we could also look at um, affinity binders um, like DARPINs, where we could show um, their receptors. And you can not only look at DARPINs, but you can also look at just protein domains, when, what they recognize. Then further, you can look at as peptides as small as 15 amino acids. And last but not least, you can look at viruses, where they dock. And currently, we are um, providing this technique to the industry and the academia and see much more boundaries um, opening up. So where, we, where else we can use the technique? So because what we have here is we can look at the one-to-one -one reaction. So like a protein that recognizes only one receptor, we can look at a one-to-many reaction. So a protein that recognizes many receptors or we can look at a many-to-many -many reaction, like you have in a virus, where you have many proteins binding to many receptors in the cell. We are now also looking um, if this technique could be used in a later stage. Once you develop, let's say, an antibody drug, you also need to have um, release testing that the antibody drug that you produce um, before you give it to the patient is still the same like the batch that you produced before. So this could be also an exciting um, 
field of, of um, where you could use our technique. But as I said, um, this will show will be shown in the future with our partners where we are already in contact. Okay, sure. Um, so finally, I'd like to focus on some solid practical advice for our audience. Um, what are your key recommendations for firms involved in developing protein drugs? To develop a new protein drug, I think it, it is very important that you produce data um, that um, show you how the mode of action works for the protein drug. The closer you get to a situation where you observe that mode of action in an environment, that is as close to later on when you give it to humans, to, so to the living organism, the more accurate the decision can be done right in the beginning. And I think um, it's never a waste of time and energy to um, look closely at your protein, analyze how it's working before you um, continue with the development. And um, then later on, when you're already in your room, you have to stop it because maybe you have a side effect that you could have foreseen if you had done a proper evaluation in the beginning. Okay, so um, anything else you want to cover before we, uh, before we wrap up here, Paul? Yeah, I think what is also very important um, that we can use our system not only on living cells, but we can also look at tissue. So we showed that with... Uh, antibody against breast cancer, um, you can see that it does recognize in the incurred tissue samples the right proteins, whereas in healthy tissue samples you don't see anything. So this makes the technique um, as a backup, so you can validate what you saw on the cell-based assays also in tissues. This gives you an advantage that you can validate in the organism what you observed in vitro.